A lot of things about Sean are a myth. That he was a bitter man is a complete and utter myth. That he hated Ireland is a myth. That he hated the church. He was a very humanitarian person. O'Casey well, occupies a very special position in Irish dramatic history, which is a remarkable history in itself, because he bursts onto the stage in every sense um, in the early 1920s when the new Irish Free State is just forming after a traumatic war of independence and civil war and he writes about a very recent history. He's Shakespearean in scale, but, but he doesn't write about kings and queens of, it, of England. He writes about the ordinary people of, of Dublin and about the working class of Dublin and not even the middle class. It's always about people who are relatively deprived of money or access to anything that we would normally take for granted nowadays. O'Casey is an interesting character because he's at an angle to the Irish universe in several ways. He's a Protestant and he's a poor Protestant. He probably learned to read later than other kids because he had terrible problems with his eyes which made him nearly blind. When he was about 12, um, his brother was an amateur dramatic fanatic and they performed Shakespeare together. He knew about four of Shakespeare's plays completely off by heart from beginning to end and would quote him all the time. So that was a big part of his education. He'd written a couple of early plays which were awkward and deemed not very suitable for production, but Augusta Gregory, Lady Gregory, who was with Yeats, the chief director of the Abbey, uh, was very taken by them. And she was taken by O'Casey. Yeats admired his work greatly. He thought he had found another John Millington Singh, somebody who spoke in a new language and who would, who, who would electrify audiences the way that Singh's Playboy of the Western World had, and somebody who would bring in loads of, of, of the public, as indeed happened. He manages to cram pain up against pleasure. He manages to push comedy up against tragedy. And he doesn't do it by separating them, he pushes them together. He jams them together so that very often there is something which is wildly, absurdly funny, followed by something which is extremely awful to witness and watch. And that um, oscillograph that he, that, he, that, that he dramatically portrays is exactly how he felt that things happen in life. The men tend to be feckless, uh, without any responsibility uh, but with a great sense of their own importance and uh, the women tend to be the ones that are uh, strong, uh, are the doers, the ones that keep everything going. It's wonderfully unsentimental and, uh, and, and very much of, of that sort of working class tough community that they were in. So it's like, oh yeah, we'll, we feel, oh that's terrible, it's, it's awful for you. Anyway, what's the next thing? What's in it for me? You know, and uh, I, I love those characters. I think they're, they're really true to life and at the same time big enough to sort of fill a theatre. With the huge success of especially Juno and The Plough and the Stars, O'Casey is also, of course, being courted by London. And these plays will be put on in London. Um, and the Abbey, slightly to their annoyance, um, aren't the people who take them to London. They're taken over by big London producers. In London, he immediately felt freer. He was in this bigger puddle, if you like, and um, wasn't so intense. Then he met my mother and fell madly in love with her, and um, she didn't really want to live in Dublin, I don't suppose. He was being um, feted everywhere. You know, it was a big newspaper um, um, subject, or case. He always in the gossip columns, always been written about. He was befriended, genuinely befriended, by George Bernard Shaw and his wife, um, who was a great support to him all his life. Um, he was, he'd moved into a kind of a new world. He also would write in an experimental way from now on. And some would say, certainly theatre audience would say, a less successful way than the realism tempered with savage humour which had, had, had characterised his, his early plays. 
The later plays are popular in some ways and in some places, but it's a career that's essentially made outside Ireland. People always want you to write the same old thing, don't they? And Juno was the one that they all wanted again and again and again. But Sean couldn't do that. Certainly doing the, the Silver Tassi, I was really surprised because I think I had thought I knew the map of Sean O'Casey. I sort of, and I hadn't a clue really. And he really shows how deft he is uh, and how skillful he is as a writer because he shifts the style of his play through the actual play itself. There's a whole load of plays in the canon that I am not aware of. Like, oh, I think everybody sort of has to revisit what they think they know about Sean O'Casey.